guys, it's Four Cards here. Live and direct from Brooklyn, New York City. Let's go. In front of me today, 2022-23 Upper Deck Credentials. Is it essential, not essential? You tell me. Configuration, six cards per pack, eight packs per box, 48 cards. So base set one through 100. Debut ticket access, 101 through 200. Tons of parallels from your yellows, reds, orange, all the way down to your golds and blacks. Note that the debut ticket access cards are tiered, right? So you have number to 999, you have number to 399, everything in between, plus all of the parallels as well. There are also horizontal debut tickets this year and horizontal debut ticket parallels. So within a box break, guys, expect your one auto or non-auto acetate, one base parallel, four debut date tickets, uh, including parallels, of course, the eight inserts, highly anticipated stars of the game, etc. two tech inserts as well. Note there are some new cards like the Bubble Hockey. They're kind of cool, Bubble Hockey rookies and gold versions of those. So do look for the highly anticipated, do look for the speed of the game as well. Note that there are all kinds of insert autos and of course the debut ticket access autos and horizontal versions, etc., etc., etc. Let's just get into it, guys. I haven't actually seen a full checklist yet but uh, I thought I'd crunch it and smash it nonetheless. It's really more for low-end collectors, not necessarily high-end collectors, and you should wait for the price to drop off a cliff. Uh, yeah, man, instead of complaining, just wait for your price point, uh, you know, because there's enough products in the hobby for you to enjoy, including Leaf. So let's have at it, let's go, let's roll, let's scroll, let's dole out these cards. So really varied uh, low-end product. I really enjoy this product, believe it or not. Mira Heskinen and Jonathan Taves, and you see the backs of the cards, plain Jane White, and the highly anticipated of Matty Veneers. I'll take a Matty Veneers off the hop. And we do have one of the speeds of the game, and it would be Spence. And you see that this is just an insert, right? Blake Wheeler, as well as Mark Stone. All right. Pack number two, looks like there's an orange back there. Jack Hughes, get well, get healthy. Rasmus Stalin, and we do have one of the uh, star of the night rookies, and it is Jack McBain. So it's a three stars, I guess, third star. And there is a Holmstrom. So this would be a parallel, and it is in fact an orange, I believe, number to 149, Nick Suzuki and Yenny Gore. So I hear so many people complain about the hobby at this point, and I'm kind of over all the complaints, man. Like, if it isn't for you, fine. So what will happen is you'll leave the hobby, and they'll produce less cards, and our cards will go up in value. So it's really, it's not a get-rich-quick scheme cards. It really is a hobby. Oh, wow, what, what, what is this? What is this? A first, oh, wow! Whoa, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That is, man, am I on a roll? A Shane Wright, a Shane Wright, number to 25. That is sick. That is absolutely sick. Number to 25, and here I am saying that cards are not a get rich quick scheme. I'm really on a roll, guys, I really am. That is unbelievable. Wowzer. Wow, sir. You know, it took me a moment to... I really am on a roll, guys. It is just getting absurd at this point. Yeah, no, what I was saying is, of course, they, when everybody's in the hobby, they produce a lot of cards, and then cards don't have value. But people never present the other side of the ledger, right? Which is all that they spend on cards. So of my, like, 45 years in the hobby, I'd say cards are, had really good value on some, like, five of those years, maybe ten of those years at best. So we have a third star here, and it would be Tuvo Teravainen. Uh, we do have, and I think these are the base horizontals here. We have a ticket access here, and it is numbered to 999, and we have another one of these speed of the games. Wow, that was incredible. Now the jury's still out on Shane Wright, but that's a wonderful hit from this product for sure. Cam Atkinson, uh, number two, 299, because we're not even guaranteed autos in this product. You could hit an acetate instead. In fact, I've seen a box with one acetate and one auto, and then the next box, GP Sports Cards, uh, didn't even have um, anything in it. So the collation might be kind of dismal at times. I'm excited, guys. That was really fun. That was awesome. Uh, are we gonna hit him again here? No, oh, another Matty Veneers? Okay, I'll take a Matty Veneers. So we do have a Stars of the Night and it's a first star of Matty Veneers and we have a number to 75 Trevor Zegris. 
I do believe that there are some update rookies in this product, even though I have not seen the full checklist yet. All right, uh, yeah, man. So, I mean, I don't know why this hobby rewards me so much, but it does. So we have Philip Crawl, and this is one of the highly anticipated. I really want one of those bubble hockey ones though. And we have a Blankenberg, and this is a parallel number to $2.99. Miko Rantanen and Konechny. Our last pack, guys, last pack. I feel like I blew the reveal of that. Not that it matters. So we have a Taylor Hall, Brock Besser, and we do have a Braden Schneider, uh, second star of the night. And we do have another one of these horizontal um, debut ticket accesses. And again, it should be number two. Oh, it's number 7.99 because of the tiering, because they're tiered, Cider and Tavares. So that's basically it, guys. I really, really enjoyed it. And it's funny, another breaker had mentioned in passing that I hated Full Force, 2015-16 one-off Full Force. And I love that product because it was really hokey like this. During the summer, all the boxes like went down to like $30 American, 25 American. And it had all these insert McDavid autos, rookie autos and die cuts and stuff. And it was just hokey. And this type of product is very hokey. So wait for your summer seasonal sales. And I know a lot of people are complaining about all the products being watered down, but that's the history of the hobby. When everybody leaves the hobby, then the cards go up in value and then people have FOMO and then enter the hobby. But cards are really, it's a hobby. So only a few people who are experts or retailers or middlemen who really know what they're doing do well in it. Otherwise, if you really want to invest, don't gamble and game, invest. And I keep on hearing people say high risk, high reward. No guys, no, low risk, high reward because it's certain, right? Like buying cards directly on eBay at the right price point during um, you know, fire sales as there are right now. High risk is low reward. I'll tell you why, because it means volatility. It means you have to get lucky. It means if you do get lucky, you think there's a trick to money and get rich scheme and then you buy back again and then you get killed. It makes much more sense to accrue small percentages which compend as opposed to going for it all, in which case you are gambling and then you buy back in and you lose. So understand it's a misnomer whenever anybody says high risk, high reward. BS. I call BS on that. So I hope you enjoyed it, guys. You know, I'm preachy teachy again. Uh, don't mind me. I love y'all. Uh, I have new full cards live and direct from a place called Brooklyn, New York City. Mm -hmm.